what do you see here well you see one of the most amazing or most beautiful wonders of the world and that is the taj mahal in india you see a difference in color in both the pictures right you see that the taj mahal has eventually turned yellowish in color over the years why so this is the result of chemical weathering another type of weathering we learn about today so chemical weathering comes along with decomposition of the chemical constituents of rocks yes so what exactly is decomposition decomposition of rocks takes place with the changes in the chemical constituents of rocks so if you remember from the last video we learnt about disintegration of rocks that does not involve any change in chemical constituents on the contrary decomposition of rocks takes place with the change in chemical constituents of rocks now factors like temperature moisture and many other such things cause minerals in rocks to either dissolve or change their composition also it occurs in moist and warm climates right so we must remember that disintegration on the other hand takes place in desert climates decomposition takes place in warm and moist climates now let's define what chemical weathering is therefore chemical weathering is the decomposition and disintegration of rocks due to chemical reactions so chemical reactions takes place which results in chemical weathering it involves both decomposition and disintegration of rocks in the process of chemical weathering you must remember that the already existing rocks experience a change in their composition and results or produces new minerals therefore new minerals are formed as a result of chemical weathering now when we take a look at chemical weathering we know that these four processes namely carbonation oxidation hydrolysis and solution help in chemical weathering we learn about each in details and understand how they help in chemical weathering right so what equation is this we see that rain water plus carbon dioxide give something called carbonic acid for your information rain water when it mixes up with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere forms a very weak acid and that is carbonic acid now what does this do this carbonic acid dissolves away carbonate rocks like limestone and marble forming grooves and holes on the surface caves and channels underground right so you know that these acid or carbonic acid tends to dissolve carbonate rocks like limestone and marble on this dissolution the rocks tend to become weak and they eventually have grooves and holes on their surface as you can see in these two pictures therefore to define the process of carbonation we can say that carbonation is a process in which rain water mixes with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to form carbonic acid that is a very weak acid which withers away the rocks now coming to a similar kind of a process let's talk about water soluble minerals so water soluble minerals also tend to dissolve in water or on coming in contact with water that eventually leads to weakening of the rock and then its disintegration so for example calcite a water soluble mineral that is present in limestone is easily dissolved by carbonic acid so rain that percolates through cracks and fissures in limestone beds ultimately form caves right so this is how water soluble minerals work this again has a name this process is known as solution 
therefore water soluble minerals in the rocks get dissolved in water and these enter in the cracks and crevices of the rocks and make the rocks loose this process is known as solution so while we learnt about carbonation and solution we saw that the minerals tend to get dissolved in water right so we also must understand that carbonation while it can take place in both dry and wet places processes like solution mostly takes place in wet areas you must have noticed such locks on the doors that get eventually covered with this reddish crumbling material now have you ever wondered how did this happen well there's a proper reason behind it so when minerals in rocks especially iron compounds react with oxygen in the air oxides of iron and aluminium are produced right these tend to crumble the rock easily so these oxides of iron and aluminium are seen as browny material on these objects and that is known as rust so this process is called oxidation therefore oxidation is a process in which compounds of iron on coming in contact with oxygen in the air tend to produce minerals or oxides of iron and aluminium that weather away the rocks right so the oxides that are formed gives a reddish color to the weathered rocks as you can see in this picture so now help me fill in the blanks oxidation gives a dash color to the weathered rocks which color is it yellowish color or is it greenish color or is reddish color or is it a brownish color yes it is the reddish color therefore oxidation gives a reddish color to the weathered rocks now sometimes it also might happen that the rocks expand on the absorption of water and also experience a change in their chemical composition right so this again is a process of chemical weathering which is known as hydrolysis therefore this process of hydrolysis results in clay minerals which are easily washed away and blown away making the rocks crumble So here you can see is a rock forming mineral feldspar which was used to make this statue. You can see the effect of hydrolysis which has led to chemical weathering on this particular statue and has led to complete change in the look of the statue. Right. So now we know that the change in the color of Taj Mahal is simply because of agents of chemical weathering. we also learned that there are four processes that help in chemical weathering namely carbonation solution hydrolysis and oxidation so now that we have covered all the three types of weathering that is biological weathering mechanical weathering and chemical weathering let's learn the factors that influence the magnitude and nature of weathering Let's name the factors first. The factors are climate, nature of rock, topography, presence of vegetation and human activities. So first we see is the effect of climate on weathering. So places with extreme changes in temperature, some places that receive very heavy rainfall, some places that receive no rainfall or direct rays of the sun. may all go through different kinds of weathering they are affected by different agents of weathering over time and there's a change in their composition as well as their physical appearance so this is how climate affects weathering or plays a very important role in the different types of weathering water is an agent of weathering we all know right so water in different forms tend to weather away rocks in different ways so you see that heavy rainfall tends to weather away the outer surface of the rocks so heavy rain tends to put immense pressure on the outer layers weathering away the rocks and further exposing the inner layers to the agents of weathering on the other hand as you remember the frost action 
So in cold regions, the water tends to seep in the cracks of the rocks. During night time, this water freezes and it expands, putting pressure on the rocks. Again, during the daytime, it thaws to further seep into the cracks and again this process keeps going on. So this continuous thawing and freezing of the ice or of the water tends to break the rocks, eventually weathering away the rock from the parent rock. Coming to weathering by river. So rivers that flow with high speed tend to put immense force on the surface of the rocks that lie on the banks or on the riverbed. This tends to break them off or disintegrate them and causes weathering. Therefore, precipitation, frost action and weathering by river all tends to affect weathering as a whole. Another important factor is the nature of rocks. If you remember, sedimentary rocks are mostly composed in association with water bodies. So they are more active or more chemically active than the igneous rocks and therefore they are more prone to chemical weathering while igneous rocks as you can see Mount Rushmore are hard rocks. Now since these rocks are so compacted the absorption and release of heat is faster and easier leading to mechanical or physical weathering. Therefore rocks like igneous rocks are more prone to mechanical weathering while rocks like sedimentary rocks are more prone to chemical weathering. Therefore nature of rocks is an important factor that influences weathering. Topography is another important factor that influences weathering. So you see that weathering is faster when the slope is steep and slower when the slope is gentle. Why so? This is because of the gravitational pull of the earth. So on this steep slope, the gravitational pull is much more than on the gentle slopes. This tends to make the flow of water faster on the steep slope, weathering away the rocks at a faster speed. While on the gentle slope, the flow of water is less or slower and thus weathering takes place at a slower pace. The other two important factors that are left are human activities and the presence of vegetation. These two factors tend to influence weathering to a large extent. So you know that human activities like deforestation, mining, construction of roads often expose the rock surface to the agents of weathering. Take for example this particular slope. What do you see here? That deforestation has taken place or there is a clearing of the vegetation that was already present there. So due to the clearing of vegetation, there is absence of support for the soil. The vegetation that was present there was holding the soil more tightly, was holding the rocks more tightly, thus exposing them less to the agents of weathering. But now that the vegetation has been cleared, the land is clearly or more exposed to the agents of weathering. Thus it only enhances weathering rate. A similar thing takes place when activities, human activities like construction of road, mining and quarrying is done that exposes the rock materials to the agents of weathering. Therefore, we should be very careful while carrying on with these activities. Therefore, in this video, we learnt about the third type of weathering that is chemical weathering. We also learn that there are certain factors that influence the nature and magnitude of weathering. Those being climate, nature of rock, topography, presence of vegetation and human activities. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. 
So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.